Recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Hey, if you're trading options or the VIX or anything to do with implied volatility, this video is for you. We're going to dive into what implied volatility is. A little bit of math involved, not too much, I promise. Let's go back to 1973 real quick when the Black-Scholes option pricing model was first published, and only a few months later, they opened the Chicago Board Options Exchange here in Chicago and started trading based on that model. So they, you know, they took a math theory and turned it into real business on the trading floors of Chicago and traded, started trading uh, listed equity options, and the rest is history. Options just took off. There's been explosive volume. So let's look at where implied volatility comes from. The Black-Scholes option pricing model. How do you like that beautiful model? So we have to plug a few inputs into the top of this little uh, machine I invented to spit out the prize. And the first thing we need, we need to know where, what's the price of the stock that we're interested in trading options on. So we plug the stock price into the options pricing model. And what we're trying to get here, we're trying to get, our, our first goal is give me the price that an option should be trading at. So let's put all the inputs in. First we put in the stock price. Then we put in the strike price of the option. Say if uh, we're talking about Apple, Apple's trading you know, around 105, maybe we're interested in the 110 calls. So the strike price would be 110, and we need to know whether it's a put or a call. The next input is the time to expiration. How far out does that option go? And this is one of the biggest determinants of option pricing. Uh, you know, as you probably know, uh, the more time an option has in it, the more expensive its, its premium is, its price is. All right. We also need to know something about interest rates. Now, in the current environment with interest rates so low, they have a uh, sort of a negligible effect compared to all these other factors. And then the last thing we put in, we need five inputs. The last thing is volatility. And normally, I mean, the way the option pricing model was conceived is, you put in the volatility that historically the stock had been trading at because it gave you, you know, a good marker, a good indication, sort of the lay of the land. What do, how does this stock behave normally? Um, if we were pricing you know, the S&P 500 options, we'd put in a historical volatility right now of about 6% because that's the actual volatility lately of the S&P 500 in the past 20, 30 days. It's only about 6%. Uh, even though the VIX is much higher. We'll talk about that difference in a moment. So back to the model, plug all these things in, and then we hit go, and boom. There's your output, the little present uh, on the right-hand side, the option price. Five inputs go into the options pricing model, and it spits out an option price. All right, now let's take a look at, well, all right, so let me just back up here. So. We still haven't gotten to what implied volatility is yet. We put in a historical volatility into this option pricing model and spit out an option price. What options traders do all day long, pro options traders, is that they put in a volatility into their model that they think is going to be the future volatility. So even though the S&P historical volatility on a 20, 30 day basis is only 6%, uh, most traders who are trading S&P options know that the volatility is, is going to be probably higher than that. So maybe they put in a volatility of 12 or 14 or 15. And then that gives them a certain option price for puts and calls on the S&P 500. Same thing with a stock. Now, individual stocks have much higher volatility. Uh, Apple's options might be trading at a 25% volatility. Tesla's options are trading at... 50 or 60 percent volatility and for its own reasons. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find out how do we get implied volatility. And all we do is sort of re-engineer the model or re-engineer re the input, so to speak, and instead of solving for the option price, we're going to put the option price into the model and solve for volatility. So let's just walk through it again. You know, this is grade school algebra, right? We put in the stock price. We put in the strike price. We put in the time to expiration for that option. Interest rates are a small factor. And then we put in the option price, where the option is actually trading. And we turn the machine on, run the calculation, and it spits out implied volatility. So that's the logic. 
a, an option price can imply a volatility. We've solved for volatility. And it tells us, uh, based on an option price, an actual option price, what volatility is it trading at? Now, why is this important? Because, for, number one, it can let you know if you're paying too much or too little for options. and give you a rough gauge of how expensive or how cheap are those options. Uh, I'll compare it to the S&P first. If the historical volatility of the past 30 days for the S&P is 6%, and we plug in an option price that spits out a uh, 12 or 13 or 14 percent implied volatility. Hey, that makes that makes sense. That's where the VIX is, and that's what the VIX actually is. The VIX is the implied volatility of S&P options. But if we plugged an option price in for a put or a call, and it spit out a 20 or 25 percent volatility, we'd know that that option was way too expensive compared to what the market was actually doing and where other options were priced. So. That's why you need, if you're trading options, you need to start paying attention to implied volatility because it tells you how expensive or how cheap your options are trading. You know, that price. And that's, so that's what implied volatility does for you. All right. Uh, and remember, this is how the VIX works too. The VIX is simply the implied volatility of S&P options. Hope this little video helped you. I'll see you next time in the kitchen.